Jesus' parting shot. John chapter 15 and verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one friend. Let us pray. Gracious God, we bless your name. We acknowledge that you are God. As we continue to worship you, and as we get ready to break the word, pray, O oh God, that we would continue to learn to love one another as your son Jesus Christ has loved us. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength, our redeemer, our comforter, our rock, our shield, and our stay. Amen. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this sixth Lord's Day of the Resurrection. I was unusually late as we were quite detained at Belmont. They had a special feature to acknowledge the beginning of family month, which is me. I want to join in greeting and acknowledging the presence of Reverend Elaine Thomas Joseph, and of course, Brother Ewart Joseph. Brother Ewart, I hope when the men were singing, you were here, adding your voice. <laughs> he wasn't? Brother Ewart, Brother Ewart, Brother Ewart. And I know you still have that rich voice. So next time you're here on a first Sunday, no, we don't have to come and snatch you. <laughs> yes. But Brother Ewart, it's really good to see you. And Reverend Elaine, really good to see you. You're looking in quite good health. Pray that God will continue to, yes, to continue to bless and keep you. Friends, when I was, when we were together the last time, the third Sunday in April, I tried to impress upon you, I shared with you, I, I remember sharing with you that The Bible, the books of the Bible, whether it is the Old Testament, whether we're talking about the first five books, the various writings, the history, the prophets, wisdom, literature, or the Old Testament, or the New Testament, sorry, the Gospels, the letters, whether it is Paul, Peter, John, They were written in a context. For the most part, the context was hostile. Whether it is the Hebrews trying to understand who is this God that they worship out of the many gods that persons talk about, who is this God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, a God that is could not be taken for granted, a God that was jealous within a world that where false gods were rampant, that against that context, whether it is the prophets proclaiming that the Israelites should get back to God because they have strayed, is always in a context of hostility where you could not take your faith for granted. Your faith, your faith was being formed. Faith was being structured to worship this one and only God. Whether it is we go to the Gospels, the Gospels where the, the evangelists, 
trying to explain and trying to encourage the Christians in the early church that Jesus Christ is worth dying for because he gave his life to us. Christianity following Jesus Christ was not to be, take, not to be trifled with. Persons lost their lives because of worshiping this Jesus Christ, calling him Lord, calling him my Lord and my God. You could not dare say that out in the open because the Roman authorities will get you. Even the religious leaders of that time, my dear friends, would get you. They would either put you in prison or place you in jail. So being a Christian in the context of the early church certainly was not to be taken for granted. It meant taking your life in your own hands. So when Jesus, my dear friends, is getting ready to leave his disciples, the farewell, the farewell discourse, he's getting ready to leave his disciples, to leave them physically, but of course you would be with them. When he's getting ready to leave them, he knows that he's leaving them they would be like sitting ducks. They would be like lambs in the midst of lambs in the midst of wolves. So here he is trying to encourage them to hold on to the faith in spite of the trials and difficulties and tribulations that they experience. But he gave them something to hold on to. He gave them the command. He said, "Listen." This is my command that I'm leaving for you. That you love one another. No one has no greater love than this, than a man should lay down his life for one's friends. Now, for those of you who come from large families, if your parents are leaving for a little while, if they're going, let's just say they're going abroad, or they're going somewhere else, even for a weekend. They would leave instructions for the rest of the family. They would tell the older ones, listen, make sure you do not ill-treat your younger siblings. Ensure that everybody eats. Ensure that everybody takes a bath every day. And they'll say, listen, you know your brother Ralphie, his arm... When he perspires, he smells like a ram goat. Make sure they take, make sure they, he, he wears underarm. He puts, he puts on the urodon before he goes outside. So they would leave instructions for you, for the, for the children. And listen, behave yourself until we return. Because they know, your parents know, that one person might be a little feisty and miserable. They know that one body, like, if they give him a chance, he will try to eat all the food. If they give him a chance, he will try to take, he will try to take all the meat out of the pot before the rest can get, or take the biggest parts of the chicken. They, they know. And so they have to leave instructions. When they're going away, they have to leave instructions so that persons would follow, so that the household will be at peace. And so it's the same idea. Jesus is going away. He is leaving them. But he's leaving them. He said, listen, I'm going out of the world, God. Um, I'm coming to you, Father, but I'm leaving my disciples. Those you have given me. And they are to continue my work. But what is the foundation for them to do the work of Jesus Christ? It is the ability, their willingness to follow the command. This is my commandment to you. That you love one another as I have loved you. I was saying, my dear friends, persons suffered from a crisis of faith. Within this passage, they suffered from a crisis of faith. Many persons left their faith because of trials and tribulations. Many persons could not take the pressure. They often gave up one another. Friends, at some, sometimes they would throw one another under the bus. 
somebody will come to them and say, I'm looking for so and so. And they say, well, they say, well, if you don't tell me, I am going to, whatever I have for you, whatever I have for them, I'll give it to you. And more than likely, my dear friends, would be death or little less imprisonment. And some of them would be willing to give up their brothers and sisters because, listen, boy, when it comes down to it, I must save my own skin. But in other instances, in other instances, persons will come looking for someone and the, the Christians would say, I know where he is, but I am not going to tell you because you are only intent on doing him harm. And the person who is looking for him, whether it is the Roman authorities, whether it is the religious leaders, they would say, well, if you don't tell us where he is, we are going to kill you. The strong Christians will say, so be it. But I am not going to give up my brother or my sister. It is in this context, my dear friends, that we could understand the passage that Jesus Christ is proclaiming in this particular part of the chapter. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this than to lay down his life for one friend. Jesus Christ was calling us to follow his example. He laid down his life for us. We should have been on the cross. But Jesus Christ, my dear friends, he offered himself as a living sacrifice for our sake. And so, for us, as Christians, we are to be willing to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice for one another. In other words, we cannot take each other for granted. Persons must look at the way that we live, the way that we treat one another, and be able to say, you see how these Christians love one another. That even in the midst of trials and tribulations, even in the midst of persecutions, they are willing to band together to show the world that they, are, they belong to Jesus Christ. Think of, my dear friends, let us come home a little bit. Think of your own congregation. How do we react to crisis? If someone that we know is experiencing a crisis, how do we act? Do we come alongside them? Are we willing, my dear friends, to give of ourselves? It might be inconvenient. More than likely, it's inconvenient, but it's in because it's inconvenient that we are supposed to leave what we are doing and come alongside our brothers and our sisters who are having a difficult time in life. We are being called, my dear friends, to navigate together in this hostile world where so much is being taken for granted. I saw someone send me a clip of, uh, of a conference being held in the United Methodist Church in the States. And what is happening there, my dear friends? It seems that we have gone crazy. Persons are standing up when they're introducing themselves. So they introduce themselves and they say, well, I am Brother Joe Ross, for instance. I am from the district of Swansea. I am straight. Another person will announce himself. I am Swansea from this particular district conference. I am gay. And so, my dear friends, each one introducing themselves, and we are saying, and you're watching it and you're saying, I wonder what it is really happening. But my friends, this 
is the world in which we are living. And God is calling those who love him, those who want to see his face, those who want to struggle with him in this world, he's calling us to join together. Now, we're not going to judge anyone. We do not judge anyone because we do not know the circumstances under which what they are proclaiming. We do not know the circumstances. What we do know, my dear friends, is that God loves us and he wants us to live in unity. He wants us to live in love, but he does not necessarily want us, my dear friends, to say, listen, everything is okay and fall for everything. He wants us, my dear friends, to stand up for him. We are not going to curse anyone. We are not going to condemn anyone. We are going to leave persons in the hands of Almighty God for him to have his way with them. What we are going to do, my dear friends, is to understand and proclaim that we serve a living God who loves us and a living God who calls us out of the world prepares us and sends us back into the world to proclaim his glorious resurrection, his righteousness, his love, his peace, his compassion. What the world needs now, according to the R&B singer, particularly a song by Diana Ross, love. We need, my dear friends, to proclaim that message of love. A love that binds us together. A love that keeps us united. A love that seeks to help each other in times of crisis. A love, my dear friends, that shows up when it really counts. When things are going good, yes, we have smiles on our faces. But when things are going bad, what is our response? Through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. May we as a community of faith show the world that we belong to Christ as we love one another. Greater love has no man than this that a man should lay down his life for his friends. My dear friends, we need to get back to Jesus. We need to pay more attention to our children and young people. As I said when I was with you the last time, they are having it harder than us, than when we were their age. They are exposed to so many things. And that is why we cannot take them for granted. Every one child belongs to us. Every one's child belongs to us. And we should go alongside them and seek to guide them. Parents, you only have two sets of eyes, two sets of ears. You need other ears and eyes to help you as you raise your children in this crooked and perverse generation. The tablet cannot raise them. The smartphones and the computer cannot raise them. Even if they are on it, we should be able to structure what they are seeing. The world has gone mad, but we keep our heads on because we belong to Jesus Christ. May the peace of God be with us. May the love of Christ constrain us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.
Please be seated. 